Hey guys, welcome back to day 44. We're going to talk about Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure. And this is a concept that we would get if it was a solid really, really easily. And so Dalton's Law, basically, we, we start going into the concepts of, of this. The pressure exerted by gas due to the collision of the gas molecules to the surface of the container. Each gas in the mixture contributes to the pressure exerted. So each gas is contributing. Partial pressure... This partial pressure is the part of the total pressure that is attributed to a particular component in the mixture. It's directly proportional to the mole fraction of that component. So what is mole fraction? Well, mole fraction, chi, it's Greek letter chi, is equal to moles of gas I, whatever gas, individual gas it is, all over the total moles. It is a unitless number. So at this point, I would go to a scale and put like a marker and a beaker and everything on the scale. And the scale just keeps going up and up and up. There's more stuff I put in, like put the beaker on the scale, put a pen, put a marker. You know, you can put your a phone, whatever you want to put in there. And the scale just keeps going up and up and up. That doesn't mean the beaker's mass changes. The beaker's mass is the beaker's mass. So the beaker's 100 grams. And I put a 10 gram marker in there. The scale says 110 grams. Right? Because the scale measures the total mass on the scale. Not just individual pieces. It doesn't have a beaker. and doesn't have a marker. It just measures the total mass. Same thing with pressure. We measure the total pressure of the gas. Or mixture of gases. So Dalton's law basically says the total pressure exerted by a mixture of gases equal to the sum of all the partial pressures of the gases present in the mixture. So for example, air. The partial pressure of air would be equal to the pressure of nitrogen gas plus the pressure of oxygen gas plus the pressure of argon plus the pressure of everything else. And that would be the air pressure, right? There's mostly nitrogen, then oxygen, then argon. And that's over 99% uh, percent of air. The rest, I think it's actually over 99.9% .9 of air is those three gases. And the rest is this trace molecules. Now for one gas, there's only one, right? The mole fraction would be one. A mole fraction of one gas, so it would be one mole of gas over one total mole, or five moles of gas over five moles, mole fraction is one. So for one gas, PI is the ideal gas law, it's the total. So there's total. So pressure of total. So what does this what does this mean? Just look at first look right here. The total pressure is gas one, two, three. So it's like just the air example here, nitrogen, oxygen, argon. So what this is right here now, that's the moles of, let's say, nitrogen, oxygen, argon, times RT over V, right? Because remember, PV equals NRT, right? NRT, that's total number of moles, NRT. So the pressure is equal to, right, divided by volume, NRT over V. It works. So if I want to look at this, this is another part, important one here. If I want to look at, like for example, the pressure of O2, that would be the mole fraction of O2. Sorry, no, no. Of O2 times the pressure total. And the mole fraction of O2 would be, uh, mole fraction of O2 would equal moles O2 over total moles. Okay. So this next paragraph just basically says if there's only one gas, the partial pressure is the total pressure of the gas. If all of it is the same. Because it's like if you get in an elevator and there's five people, the five people, all their masses add up to hopefully less than what the elevator can handle. It's the same thing with gases. All five gases will add up to the total pressure in the container.
and that's all partial pressure is, is that each gas contributes, contributes to the total pressure. And here's the other thing. If I go back here, if we add, if I add more oxygen gas, it does not affect nitrogen or argon. They're independent. That makes sense? Just like if I gain weight or if I lose weight, it doesn't affect anybody else around me. It's just me. Okay, my chair notices, but other than that, you know, if I gain weight, that doesn't mean anybody I live with has to gain weight. Or if I lose weight, that doesn't mean anybody I lose, live with has to lose weight. All right? Same thing, with, you know, when we do it with mass, we're used to it with mass, it applies to pressure as well. So let's do three examples, and we'll go from there. The first example is I have three samples of gases. I have a liter of oxygen at two atmospheres. I have a liter of nitrogen at one atmosphere and two liters of helium at two atmospheres. I'm going to mix them together in a three liter container. The question ends up to be, what's the final pressure? Assume temperature remains unchanged. Okay. So I have a container here. And I'm also going to draw a container here. Container here, and another one. Three containers, but this last container is twice as big. Perfect. So this is a three liter container. It has on here a dial with a pressure on it, and I want to know what that reading is. At first, I have O2. I have one liter of O2 at two atmospheres. I have one liter of N2 at one atmosphere. And we have two liters helium at two atmospheres. And all three of these are being inputted somehow into this new three liter container. So in this new container, my total pressure will equal three partial pressures. The pressure of oxygen gas, the pressure of nitrogen gas, and the pressure of helium. All three of them added. The question becomes, do they keep their same pressures? And that question was, is it as simple as taking two plus one plus two and making it five? From right here, two atmospheres, one, two. Well, the answer is no, because what's going on? Temperatures remaining fixed. Temperature remains uh, constant. So what, what are you doing? If I'm not reacting these, that means I'd have a P1, V1 equals a P2, V2 for all these gases. Every gas has a P1, V1, P2, V2, because they have a pressure for oxygen. It's two atmospheres. And it's one liter. We don't know it's new pressure. But we know it's in three liters. So that means the pressure of O2, P2, is going to be two thirds. So my pressure of O2 is two thirds atmosphere when it comes in. So it goes from two atmospheres down to less than one atmosphere. Because the volume is tripling. And then two, same thing with N2. We have one atmosphere, one liter, new atmosphere, new pressure, and three liters. So that means the pressure of N2 is going to be one third atmosphere. So together, those two will make it one atmosphere. Helium has the same thing going on. P1V1 equals P2V2 here. So I have two atmospheres, two liters equals P2 times three liters. So that's four thirds. Pressure of helium is four thirds atmosphere. So now we just plug these in. So this was four thirds. 
one third for nitrogen and two thirds for oxygen. So it means the total pressure would be three and four would be seven thirds or 2.3 atmospheres. Two and one third. That's partial pressure right there. We just have to do a little Boyle's Law. All right, because when the gas goes from one container to another, volume changes, the pressure is going to change because the temperature did not. Then we just added them up. Second example. Mixture of 40 grams of helium, 40 grams of oxygen, O2. At two atmospheres, pressure. What's the partial pressure of helium? Hmm. Well, what do you think here? Since it's half helium, is it just half? Is it one atmosphere? Well, going back to Dalton's law, pressure of helium is equal to the mole fraction of helium times the total pressure. The mass fraction of helium is one half. It's half helium and half oxygen. But the mole fraction of helium is not half. 40 grams of helium, and we know that 4 grams of helium is 1 mole of helium, correct? So we have 10 moles of helium. For O2, I have 40 grams of O2. And we know that there are 32 grams of O2 in one mole of O2. That's 1.25 moles of O2. So now we can use this pressure of helium. The partial pressure of helium is equal to the mole fraction of helium times the total pressure. Well, the total pressure was two atmospheres. We had 10 moles of helium on top, and then I have the 10 moles of helium plus the 1.25 moles of oxygen. So that's 10 divided by 11.25 times 2. I get 1.8. Assuming I have two sig figs. Pressure of helium is 1.8 atmospheres. And that's a partial pressure one. That's all it is. Number three here is going to introduce gas stoichiometry, which is the main topic and the first problem of the next video, next lecture on day 45. But we're going to do an example on this day 44 video. And gas stoichiometry is one of the top five. So this problem and the one we'll do next is or are one of the top five. So you will have a gas stoichiometry problem on your final exam. So, and I need to get a better picture of this. No. There's a tap there, and you can rotate the tap, just like a, a water hose or anything like, you know, any other valve. You got these two gases, and they mix and react. So we're going to open the valve. The gases are going to mix. So the O2 is going to come in this way, and the NO is going to come in that way. Right? They're going to mix O and O, and they're going to form as much product as possible. What's the final pressure? So there's going to be a before the reaction, but yet no reaction occurs. I turn the valve. What happens to my container? Well, from NO's point of view, I go from 4 liters, I gain 2 liters. We're assuming that this volume is negligible. We're not going to worry about that. So we'll go from 4 liters to 6 liters. From O2's point of view, I go from 2 liters to 6 liters. We triple the volume. For NO's, I, you know, 1.5 times the volume. So this is before the reaction happens. So open 
the valve before reaction. Well, what's going to happen is I have a P1V1 equals a P2V2 here, don't we? I have half an atmosphere. I have four liters, new pressure, and six liters. That's two sixths. All right, two sixths. So that's two sixth atmospheres or one third atmospheres of NO. Let's check O2 now. O2, P1V1 equals P2V2. I have one atmosphere. We have two liters, P2, and uh, six liters. So it's also two six atmospheres. Now we're assuming no change in temperature. So my temperature is not changing. I can kind of do that because if it's at room temperature to start with, after everything's done, it'll cool back down to room temperature and we can get our measurements. So it's not ridiculous to assume that. Although when we do open the valve, the temperature is going to change. Whether it's a lot or a little, it doesn't matter. Okay. I do a gas flow. PV equals NRT. I need to go to moles, right? Well, is the volume, once the tap's open, is the volume constant? Yes. Is R constant? Yes. Is T constant? I use this guy for T. T's constant. So what is going to happen here is that my pressure is going to be proportional to moles. So I'm not going to be able to go to moles for this problem. However, pressure is directly proportional to moles. So if moles double, pressure doubles. Moles half, pressure half. So now we need to do our reaction. First, we're going to find limiting reactant. I'm going to do it the same way. I'm going to take two six atmospheres divided by two to give me one six, and two six atmospheres divided by one to give me Two six. That means NO is my limiting reactant. So how much product do we produce? So at the end, right? At the end, it's going to be the pressure of NO plus the pressure O2 plus the pressure NO2. Everything. Well, for my limiting reactants, NO, so I'm going to start with two six atmospheres of NO. And we know it's two atmospheres of NO to two atmospheres of NO2. Well, that's gonna give, allow me to say that I have two six atmospheres of NO2 produced. How much oxygen is left? Well, how much oxygen is used? So I'll start with two six atmospheres of NO. And we know it's two atmospheres of NO to one atmosphere of O2. So this means that we are going to use or consume one sixth atmosphere of O2. Because half of two sixths is one sixth. So if I start with two six atmospheres, and we use one six atmospheres. Looks like I have one six atmospheres of O2 remains. So when we look at our pressures, my total pressure would be the pressure of NO, the pressure of O2 and the pressure of NO2. The pressure total then, pressure NO is zero because my limiting react. The pressure of O2 is one six atmospheres and the pressure of NO2 was two six atmospheres. So it looks like the total pressure will be one six and two six, three six, 
or one half atmosphere, 0 0.5 atmospheres. So that would be my total pressure. So what did we do in this problem? One, we had to check what happens when the valve opens and we get new volume, so there's new pressures. Temperature didn't change. Then we found that pressure is proportional to moles, so we can use the atmospheres instead of moles. Found the limiting reactant like we normally do. And then we figure out how much product was produced, how much non-limiting non reactant was used, then how much remains at the end. And we just, in this case, had to add them up for the total pressure. That is Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure and a little bit of gas stoichiometry for you. And that will conclude this video. We'll see you for some more gas stoichiometry in day 45. See you next time. Take care, guys.